Well, first of all, just thanks for joining us and giving up your time to, to answer some no, of your No, no problem. How no are problem. you? How have you been over the last few weeks? Ah, all good. Um, I'm still working and stuff, so keeps me busy and keeps me in some sort of routine. And I, I still kept busy, so I think that's the main thing for for me. Is try to keep in some sort of routine. Definitely, and I think those of us that follow you on social media know how busy you've been with your day job in the Partick Thistle Charity Trust. Can you tell us yep. about the work you've been doing there, particularly over the last few weeks, and how rewarding that must be being able to be available to help people? Aye, so um, pretty much my work at the Partick Thistle Charity Trust, we have been delivering meals to either sort of families in, in hardship or elderly or vulnerable people in the community. Um, we started off with this was just finished the fourth week and the first week we were delivering around about 100 meals and we up to probably just just over 300 meals a day um, that was between kids I say elderly folk and, and vulnerable people in the community and like aye so it is quite rewarding particularly with the elderly folk then um, a lot of them don't get the house they don't get to go for messages and I'm maybe the only person they get to see for that day so um, just building up a wee relationship with them and get talking to them and I know how much that means to quite a lot of them and you get family members getting in touch with you through social media and stuff and how appreciative they are of the, the work that we've done and stuff mm-hmm. and we've had a couple of wee kids that have maybe designed like Easter cards and stuff thanking us for either delivering it to them or even we've had them like making up wee cards saying thank you for delivering to my granny and grandpa when I'm not able to see them this really helps me so uh, it is really rewarding and Ultimately, that's, that's what needs to be done just now. I think that's this type of situation needs to needs to bring people together, particularly in, in communities. So, and and in particular in the north of Glasgow, where there is so much poverty and and hardship. And but the one thing I would say is this, it does bring a lot of people together. These situations. I was at a street today in the north of Glasgow, and I delivered a meal, and there was people setting up big speakers out in their garden. Um, I was asking what was going on. The neighbour says, oh, that's us setting up for street bingo later on. So basically at half six, at half five, they'd go around and give cards to all the, everybody in the street. And uh, at half six, they'd, everybody would go out in their garden and play street bingo. And I think it goes back to that wee sort of phrase. I was basically, people make Glasgow, and I think that's, a, that's the exact phrase of it. <laughs> that's yeah, pretty much summed it up for me. So, aye. No, that's excellent to hear. And what about in, your, in the spare time that you do have? What have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Um, just been doing 5Ks really. Um, I've seen a couple of boys on Twitter, a couple of my, my close mates have been doing 5Ks and I'll be honest, to start with, I, I wasn't doing a great deal. I find it really difficult to, to motivate myself to, to train on my own, particularly when we don't know when football's going to be back. Mm-hmm. It's been all this training and it might be another six months, it might be two months, might be, I don't know when it'll be. So um, I do find it difficult to, to motivate myself, but I seen a couple of the boys were doing five Ks, and I thought I need to get involved in that. And then I set myself a wee challenge for the first April, just trying to do at least a five K every day. And I've, I've did that. I've added in a couple of ten Ks. Um, so I, that, that's pretty much keeping me ticking over. I've not done too much with the ball because that's yeah. I, I don't know when we're going to be back, so <laughs> the running I'll have to do for now. Well, that's you've answered my next question there in terms of keeping motivated. Um, have you been keeping in touch with the, the rest of the boys? Or? Presume you have. I, um, I've kept in touch with them individually and spoke to some of the boys, and then I've have a wee group chat, and we'll we'll speak away on that as well. So, I think most of the boys seem in good spirits. Um, obviously, for for a few, and including myself, then it's a wee bit uncertain because the season's technically finished now, and what goes on next season, it's I don't think the club don't know that, manager doesn't know that, we don't know that as players, fans don't know that. So, ultimately. The, the good thing is everybody's in the exact same position. We don't really know what's going to happen. and um, But I just have to take it what it is. It's a situation that nobody can really control. So I just try and not worry about it and I'll just take it as it is. And looking back on the season, there was, it was a bit of an up and down season until it came to a premature end. How do you assess yep. the, the season overall? Uh, it's, it probably is quite difficult to assess overall because I think when you... Look at the period that we were in there since since the gaffer had come in. Then you're probably going right. We've got a chance of getting up here. We've got a chance of being in that playoff spot, and obviously it's taken away now. So um, up and down, as you say, and some really really good moments, some some bad moments. Um, but I felt we were 
we were certainly in a really good position. We had a strong squad and a good bunch of boys. And I would have been really confident going into that sort of last quarter of the season that we would have been able to achieve something. But ultimately, that's not what's important now anyway. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that is what it is. And like I say, you can't control it anymore. It's done. So, we just got to move on. And you mentioned that obviously there was highs and lows. Was there any particular high points that stand out for you in the season? Um, I think Queen of the South is obviously a really big one. Um, I think for myself personally, I, I liked the first game of the season. We played Stirling Albion and scored them. We got the win, got us mm-hmm. off to a good start. And we had that good start. I think first game when when the gaffer had, the new gaffer had come in and we were a bit, the first, first game for me was in the city as I was working mm-hmm. in. Um, I was in Italy in his first game, but came back in Edinburgh City, and I'd never really, I'd never met him. I'd never had any communication with him other than the Thursday before training, and um, obviously I had been playing most weeks. But I took myself at the team that week by working, and I was coming back to the Edinburgh City game, and I felt I had a wee sort of point to prove, and I felt I played good, decent, and mm. we got a win there. And, um, and that was a good moment for me as well. So I was, I was probably Queen of South, probably a stick out one for me. Um, Good win against a good team, and aye. Excellent. And not to dwell on them, but any particular low points that stick out in the memory as well? Um, probably a couple of defeats. I think like Elgin away was really frustrating. I think Annan at home was really frustrating. Cowden Beef at home really frustrating. Um, a couple of defeats that I would just get a bit frustrated that, mm-hmm. that we didn't quite achieve. Obviously, come on, look, you might go off. We played against an SBL side, but two or six goals in the game is never nice. Um, but aye, certainly probably more highs than lows. Over. Aye, I would say so. Certainly more highs, and I, th- I think there would have been more highs. I think there would have been even more highs with the last quarter of the season. So, mm-hmm. um, you never know. That's it. Mm-hmm. No, I don't want to some of the questions that the supporters have submitted through various different social media channels. First of all, yep. we've got one from Nadine Murthy, who I believe is part of your frame football. Um, yeah. Asking what is the best part about being at Queen's Park? Um, best part about being at Queen's Park for me, it's I just think the whole club's brilliant, really, from from staff members to to fans to training facilities. And by staff members, I mean everybody from reception to like Christine Rhodes, the kit man, to Sean making cups of tea and Mary making cups of tea and coffee for the boys to physios to yourselves videoing games and interviewing afterwards, committee members on the bus. I just think there's a real good connection there and there's a really good vibe about the club. I think you're well looked after and that's something that I really appreciate and mm-hmm. I think everybody that comes, I think everybody that's played at the club would would have that to say about the club is that you're, you're really well looked after and ultimately that's really appreciated. And that probably ties in with another question we've got through Twitter from Robbie Boyd, who was asking, what is it about the club that makes you so loyal? And, it, and it just it, you and the club seem to just go hand in glove, I suppose. And it's a uh, good... yeah, I think there's, obviously, I had that period where I, said away, I was away from Queen's Park and I would take myself away from football for six months. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, maybe there's that sort of saying out there, you don't, have, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And it wasn't quite gone for me, but maybe I, maybe I came back and... I appreciated it even more, and I, I, I don't know if it's a, I don't know, there's some sort of connection there that I just, I really like the club and I like everything about it. Aye, that's it. It works, aye. So, the next it question works, is aye. from Cowboy1867 on Twitter. And he's asking, what was it like having Davy Gregg as manager and did he sell the club to you before he came here? Um, Davy Gregg for me is most influential person I've had in football. Um, he was my manager at St Rocks when I was 18 and then at Blantyre Vicks. Um, and it, he, he spoke extremely highly of the club. He would speak about it to me quite a lot. And Did he have to sell it to me? He spoke very highly of the club. We would never have a bad word to say about them. But for me, I don't think anybody needed to sell the club to me. It, it was... It's a chance to play at Hamden at senior football, and that's something I always, I always wanted to try and achieve. Davey's a manager, like I say, is the most influential person I had in football. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for him, then I'd, I would have never had an opportunity to, 
to to win stuff in junior football and share share a brilliant dressing room with good boys and. I don't think I'd ever got the chance to play at Queen's Park. I played at other junior teams where I don't think people allowed me to, to show my talents. I was quite restricted in terms of what I had to do. I was say talents, but in terms of my football, then I wasn't able to try, quite show that. Um, Davy basically allowed me to go and express myself and play with freedom, play with a smile on my face. and That's the biggest thing for me now. And I, I try and encourage people to play with a smile on their face and I hope that people watching me, it brings a smile to their face and that's probably just down to Davy. So... No, he's a brilliant manager, brilliant guy. I still keep in contact with him. I work with him every day just now, which is brilliant. So, Excellent. Next question is from Daniel Matheson on Twitter, and he's asking, who's the best player you've played against? Um, just on me, Daniel, I know he had um, sent in a wee, some stuff about doing 5Ks and he was trying to catch my time, but some of his times are unbelievable, by the way. For, for his age, then excellent. Um, try and keep that going. In terms of best players I played against, uh, I played I played in a reserve match when I was eighteen. It was a wee reserve match. I went on trial at Motherwell, and I played against Scott Brown and Paul Cardis and Paddy McCourt and stuff. Were playing. And if you ask me, they're probably the biggest names that I played against. I think if I was to go best players that I've directly played against, um, I'd probably go with Stephen O'Donnell. Um, I'll say like Command that they haven't played them in January. The Scotland internationalist. Um, I think I played on the left with Kian and we were up against pretty much Chris Burke and him and I don't know if I would say absolutely fantastic footballer but he's a powerful big guy um, he bombs up and doing that wing and it's just really difficult as a, as a wide player I think particularly myself as a wide sort of forward player and I'm always forward thinking you know when you're playing against him that you're, you're going to spend a lot of time in your own half and having to defend a lot um, and he forces you to defend so from that point of view he would probably be the toughest Toughest opponent. Excellent. Next question is from David Stewart. He's asking your best moment in a Queen's Park shirt. I don't know. I could. I think if you would say moment, I'd always have to go back to the Clyde goal. Um, then I would always go to that. And if I, if I had to pick one, then I, I would pick that. But I don't think I could pick one. I'm getting the opportunity in my debut at the Edinburgh City and the Petrofac Cup. We won in 0 0. Terrible game. I come on as a sub. We won in penalties, but getting the opportunity to do that was was brilliant. Obviously, the Clyde goal, um, getting promoted, um, and I, I would probably I would probably include coming back to Dunmark and get my first game again. I think that we played Stirling mm-hmm. Albion away, and that was my first game back with the club, and that that meant a lot to me as well. So, but if I had to pick one, then I would I'd probably always need to go with the Clyde goal. That ties in nicely to the next question. Who's it's come in from Tom on Twitter? Who's asking how many times a day do you watch that goal? <laughs> um, probably a couple. Probably a couple. I'll always pop up whether it's SPFL, maybe put it out, or somebody will end up sharing. It's probably going to be around about this time, and you know that far from when the playoffs happen every year, and somebody will share it at some point, or it'll pop up my Facebook, and, and then I'll watch it a few times. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, last few questions. First one from Ross Laird, who's asking if your favourite away ground to play at. Um, favourite away ground. I enjoy playing at Southern Albion. I think generally, it's a, apart from the last time I visited there, it's generally always a decent surface, decent, good changing rooms, and always get a, always get a good travelling support wherever we go. But I'd say we get a good travelling support there, and it's not too far away. So. Excellent. Quite the next question is from Graeme Shields. Um, he's asking, what is the best thing about being at the club other than getting to hang about with Willie Muir? I won't say any more on Willie Muir. He's <laughs> certainly not into today involving him. Um, best thing about the club for me, like I said earlier on, I think it's just how well you're treated. I say yeah, that includes guys like Graham and I say going to training the facilities we've got are top class. Um coaches and managers and all the staff running about there are brilliant the access to the gym, equipment that we're able to use. A lot of a lot of other clubs are that fortunate, even higher up in the leagues so that you might maybe have to rent high half a pitch in a high school and stuff. And I've been there and done all that type of stuff, but having our own place where it's our own training ground and everything that we get to use is of the highest standard is Ah, it's, it's excellent for me. 
Next question is from Graham's wife, Lorna, who's asking, what do you dread most heading into pre-season? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Uh, bleep test, I think. Dead simple bleep test. I think I've been quite fortunate the last two seasons. I think I've missed it. I think I've maybe been in Italy. I've been, I'm pretty sure I've been coaching away in Italy when they've, when they've been going on with whatever I've been in terms of pre-seasons at the times. Um, I've not done a bleep test in a while and I'm not a big fan of them, but I uh, probably that. Um, second last question comes from Simon Cook and he's asking what other team do you wish that you could have played for? Anywhere. Anywhere. Um, Man City. Ah, that's Anywhere a bad, I a bunch of explanation. Like most people that follow you on social media know you're a, a big Man City. Um, and the Aye. last question comes from Fraser Galt who is asking who was the better Galt brother growing up? Growing up? Um, now he's four and a half years older than me, so he always had that on. Always had the years advantage on me. Growing up, I would say he was a decent player. Um, would I say he was better? No. Um, I say he had the years advantage on me, and I think when he probably reached reached his later teens and and his early twenties, then that's when I probably started progressing a wee bit more, and he went downhill, and I went. A wee bit more up, Paul. Thanks very much. No, no problem.